Since the beginning of mankind, our imagination has partnered up with our fears, making us believe in the unnatural. Ghosts have haunted, witches have made their potions of evil, and zombies have eaten the brains of the unlucky. Zombies. We're the most used creatures in movies, books, and all sorts of entertainment. But obviously they can't be real, right? Just figments of our imagination. Or can they? Is it possible for zombie apocalypse to really happen? And if it was, how would the zombies work? Obviously, we have seen different kinds of zombies, different adaptations for different stories. Everything from the classic slow rotting kind to fast and agile World War Z type and everything in between. So the first step is finding out what would make up a zombie. The Google definition for zombie is the noun 1. Corpse said to be revived by witchcraft, especially in certain African or Caribbean cultures. Or 2. A cocktail consisting of several kinds of rum, liquor, and fruit juice. This video probably isn't about cocktails, so let's stick to the first definition. Corpse survived, so the undead. A human body coming back from the dead is very unlikely. Even if zombies did exist, they would still need their insides to work. They would still need blood to flow through their bodies, and parts of the brain still intact and working. But what if they weren't completely dead? Maybe just rotting slow enough to give them the death effect. This is tricky, keeping the body alive while slowly killing it or messing it up. So I decided to look up some diseases that could do that. The disease I found was leprosy. Leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease, is a chronic infection caused by the bacterium Microbacterium leprae and Microbacterium lepromatosis. Left untreated, leprosy can be progressive, causing permanent damage to the skin, nerves, limbs, and eyes. Just what we needed. It messes up the body without killing it. Some other symptoms were sensory nerve damage, which would stop them from feeling pain. Motor nerve damage, which would cause various forms of paralysis, such as dropped foot, dropped wrist, clawed hand, which would give them a zombie walking effect such as this. Now you could also harm the back of the brain, called the cerebellum. Now the cerebellum, if it was damaged, would cause the movements that were slow and not coordinated, and wide variety of muscle movement coordination problems, kind of like this. So we got the zombie effect taken down, but leprosy victims can still control their actions. How can you make them want to kill their friends and family? Well, ASAP Science made a video about it, which you can find here. He basically explained that for viruses to work, they have to arrive in a certain point in the body where they can cause the harm. In the case of the zombie virus, you need to travel to the neurons. The neurons are some of the longest cells and can transport molecules and proteins to the entire body. Some viruses, such as rabies, use something called retrograde axonal transport to transfer to the neurons to where they need to go. So where do you need them to go? In this case, the brain. And it just happens that if the virus runs through the neurons near the nose, by the olfactory nerve used to smell, it will lead right up to the vendromial hypothalamus, which tells you a flow, the amygdala, which controls emotion and memory, the frontal cortex, which controls problem solving, morality, and inhibiting impulsive behavior. This would lead to a human who is super hungry, aggressive, brain dead, can recognize family or friends, or control their own actions other than to feed. Sounds like a zombie, right? One problem I found with this is that the zombie would not just eat humans, but animals, plants, other zombies, and themselves. That wouldn't make very effective zombies, so we have to find a way for them to recognize humans above all other things. Some ideas I had were they can sense body heat, they can hear your heart beating, they can smell blood. These seem like the obvious choices as that's what zombies usually look for in the movies, but since our case the zombies would have to be kept alive, they would have all these too. I know it wouldn't be any good if the zombies could smell blood like I said before, what if they could smell something else like a human pheromone which dead people wouldn't excrete? For example, zombies could be attracted to sweat. Therefore, the zombies would be more attracted to people who are scared, since fear would make them sweat. There's again another problem. The way we sweat is through our sweat glands, but they're all around our body. Over 2.6 million of them. How can we break them? Now, leprosy does a good job of stopping the body from sweating, but it doesn't affect all leprosy victims, just some. So how else can we stop the sweat glands from working? We don't exactly have to. See. What if the zombies were dehydrated enough not to sweat? 
Cortisol helps divert energy to where you need it and away from non-essential functions of the body. But the same thing happens with water. Your body is made up from about 50 to 75 percent of water. Water is essential for your organs to work. So when you're dehydrated, your body moves the water that would regularly go to places such as your eyes to cry and bring them to places that are more important to survive, such as the brain. So the zombie would have to drink just enough water to survive, but not enough to be completely healthy. To control the zomb how much the zombie would drink, you would have to go to the hypothalamus. That's where most of the body's instinctual behavior, such as eating and drinking, happens. Sound familiar? That's because we had already mentioned the hypothalamus early in the video, and now it can be used to control the hunger of the zombies. The last part of making the zombies want to eat the humans is to reward them when they do. Right now, we got the zombies' attention on the humans, but they don't really know what to do. My first thought was to look at how drugs work. Drugs work in many different ways. Different parts of the brain can make you feel good, such as the hypothalamus and the cerebellum, was mentioned earlier in the video. But I found another way, dopamine. Dopamine is the body's natural reward system. It's what makes you feel happy. When you eat something yummy or win the lottery, dopamine is released into your body so that you feel good. Drugs such as cocaine take advantage of this by either increasing the amount of dopamine or preventing its removal, causing continuing stimulation of your neurons to create intense moments of pleasure. And when people stop taking cocaine, they crave for more since your brain remembered that they got rewarded for it. So all you would have to do is for the zombie body to release dopamine every time it ate a human. The very last part of the zombie virus is the infection. The virus wouldn't do very well, the zombies all got killed, and the virus didn't get around. In most zombie movies, the disease is spread by a bite from the zombie. The obvious place to look for info about this was rabies. <coughs> rabies is a contagious and fatal viral disease of dogs and other mammals. We don't want it to kill the zombies. We just want to know how it's spread by the bite. It's quite simple, actually. When an animal with rabies bites you, its saliva, which contains the virus, gets into your bloodstream and into your circulatory system, where it can go where it needs to. You might have remembered that we have already programmed the zombie to eat the humans, so the human will probably die before the infection gets to it. The easiest way to fix this is to put them in two stages. First stage, to infect. Go crazy, biting people, and spreading the disease. And the second stage is the one we've been talking about the whole time. The one that go and eat people. For simplicity's sake, to make a zombie, you need leprosy, damage to the amygdala, cerebellum, frontal cortex, changes to the hypothalamus, for it to recognize sweat and not to sweat itself, for dopamine to be released when it eats humans, and for the virus to be transmitted through saliva. Wow. So those were the basics of the zombie. Of course, a lot more would have to be done for it to work, and there are different ways for the zombie to work. These zombies wouldn't survive very well as they are, but they would do pretty well considering we can't use movie magic. You know, when stuff explodes when it shouldn't. Now, the only way I see this type of virus getting out of control, since the government has actually a lot of defenses in case of a zombie apocalypse, is for two viruses to come in contact and form as one. It would be a lot more complicated than this, with more viruses, and a few mutations, but it's a start. Hopefully no mad scientist has watched this video and suddenly has an idea of what they're doing over the weekend. But even if you are that mad scientist, all I want to say is, thanks for watching.